What's up, this your boy Super Mario 1990 coming at y'all with an Outriders demo review. Just giving y'all my impressions of the demo. Now the demo dropped yesterday. I played it yesterday. I had fun with it yesterday. And I also released some videos of my first playthrough today. I released uh, five videos. I'm still gonna have some more on that. But um, so last month I've heard of the game. I probably heard of the game last year, probably just dismissed it, probably didn't catch my eye. Probably didn't get my attention, but when they said they were going to drop a free demo uh, on February 25th, I was like, whoa, hey, a free demo of a game that's about to come out? Because let's be honest, that's really rare. Like, you rarely ever see a demo of a game before it comes out. Even games after it comes out, you rarely ever see a demo. So I was like, okay, this, this is nice. You get to check it out for free, see if it's good or not. And so I had to do some research. I went and Googled it because I'm like, well, what is this game? Is it one of those multiplayer games? that you can just only play online with people and that's it? Is it a first person shooter? Cause I kind of dismiss first person shooters. I like third person. But when I found out it was like a, it was a first person solo cam, I mean, um, not, not first person, but a third person shooter. And it had a solo campaign. I was like, okay, cool, I'm down. You can also do co-op if you want to, but I'm more of a solo player. So I'm like, okay, cool, solo campaign, third person shooter. Let's check it out. And so uh, I ended up downloading the demo. And when you get into the demo, uh, the first thing they have you do is create your player. So when you create your character, it's really basic. Uh, it's nothing deep. Uh, you get like a handful of characters to pick from. You just pick the most handsome person and then you do what you will with that. Uh, from there, you just pick your skin tone. You give them hair, you give them facial hair, hair color, and that's about it. You can't morph the characters. You can't like adjust the heads or adjust any like other facial features or anything like that. You just really pick a face, Give them skin color, hair. You can give them scars or, you know, no scar. Um, I did no scar because I'm a pretty boy. I don't want my dude having no scar. Like, that just makes me look like a victim. So after you do that with your character, they drop you into the game. And um, story-wise, I feel like the game is, you know, it's pretty simple to grasp. Um, it's, you know, like, a, to me, I felt like some, some Mass Effect vibes, kind of. Only plot-wise. Like, it just felt like a poor man's kind of Mass Effect. Like, I saw a lot of similarities between uh, this story and the plot of Mass Effect Andromeda. It's basically what happened is um, Earth is uninhabitable. And so they were sent on this planet called Enoch. Um, supposed to be seemingly, you know, a nice planet for people to stay on, but a group of people were sent out to do more research on it to see if it really was a safe planet. And as you would guess, um, not so much of uh, things go awry. Uh, there's this thing called an anomaly where it just creates a lot of climate changes and just weird, mysterious, dangerous things going on. And so your character who is an outrider, basically like a, you know, a soldier or fighter, uh, trained with guns and weapons and things and so forth, he uh, finds himself locked up in a cryo chamber for 31 years. Wakes up, and because you're in the cryo chamber, you don't age. So he, you know, he's himself. You know, it's kind of like a two-hour nap for him. And then he just like he's waking up 31 years later in Enoch, and the world is like it's it's really different. And they're at war, and he finds out that he's the last outrider, and he has to. You know basically try to see what's going on go to war try to see what's going on with this enoch situation you know so uh, it's pretty simple to get into um you know the characters are pretty fun uh, they don't take themselves seriously the game doesn't really take itself seriously it's more of like a fun kind of like you know just m-rated you know lunge and f-bombs here and there uh it's got some funny moments but it's also dark at the same time uh, it's just a pretty fun, entertaining game to play so far, as far as the story goes. And um, getting into the gameplay, it is real old school third person. Like, I, I appreciate it. It took me a while to get acclimated into it because I'm used to the strategical shooters. Um, I'm like, um, you know, those games where like you take cover, you know, you kind of shoot here and there when the timing is right, and then you advance to cover again. This one, this is like old school 90s, early millennium characters are everywhere um your enemies and you got to like run around you can take cover but it's not beneficial to stay in cover the whole time because enemies swarm you everywhere like they it's not those games where they just like stand in one spot and then they just shoot and then you just figure out the time and like okay he's gonna get out of cover right now boom hit him in the head and then boom hit this guy in the head and then look over here it's like no they are moving everywhere 
everyone's a bullet sponge they take up a whole clip so it's like you gotta do a lot of moving around mobile things and there's different enemy types too not only do you have enemies that are shooting at you and trying to flank you from every position and i mean like i'm in like a whole army of people not like you know four or five people no it's like it's like dozens all at one time and the spaces that you're shooting in, you know, aren't that wide open. Sometimes there's a lot of cover, sometimes there's not much cover. So it kind of depends on your area too. That can kind of change your approach in your shootout situation too. And on top of that, you have these melee enemies. They piss me off. There's always like about four or five of them at one time and they all rush you. They have like these weird like sword machete type. They have these weird sharp objects, right? And they run at you and they are, they are big and they're fast they're just as fast as you like pressing the sprint button to run away from them doesn't do much you press the sprint button you get away you look back they're right there boom so it's like you can't run away from these guys you gotta like shoot them head on you gotta like run to get space to figure out when you're gonna shoot them and then kind of keep running but they are the most annoying because they come at you when everyone else is still shooting so you gotta dodge bullets and you gotta dodge them and there's like there's four or five of them all the time and if they corner you it's basically game over like i've had a lot of game over screens just trying to dig my way out of that now what's really impressive um i'm on a ps4 base ps4 and so these game over screens usually when you die it's like you gotta wait about five years before you play again this one is really quick like i felt like i had a ps5 i had to look at myself like wait a minute hold up i got a ps4 not a ps5 right it's like you die and it's like you're in the game like 10 seconds later so it's not really frustrating dying so many times because the game loads up right away and you're back in battle. You do have to start from the beginning of the battle, um, unless you beat like a whole section, you get to a new section, but you pretty much have to restart the whole thing. So um, yeah, it's not that frustrating to keep dying over and over again. And like I said, this game is so fast paced. Uh, I have not played a shooter like this in a long time, so I had to get used to it. But it is really fun. It's great to like find all these new approaches, fight all these different enemy types, uh, use your like different powers, try to like strategize on the fly. Uh, really, really fun. And so getting into uh, graphics now, the graphics they were pretty good. Uh, I'm on the PS4, like I said, base PS4. Uh, pretty good. I mean, it's not like one of the most visually stunning games that you've ever played. Nothing like that. But it does look fairly well. Uh, it does make me wonder how it would look on the PS5. Uh, they do a good job of, like with coloring and things like that. Um, not to the level of like Mass Effect Andromeda, how that game looked visually, but it's kind of like somewhat a few notches below. So on PS5, it would be really interesting to see how it looks. But um, yeah, I mean, the graphics are they're pretty clear, uh, pretty good. Uh, the detail is pretty good. Detail's pretty good. Um, and you know, it's, you've just seen you've just seen some better games. You've seen a lot worse, but you've seen better games. But this one, it look it looks fairly good. And so, with that being said, um, the other thing about it too is that the gameplay graphics, which I'm impressed with, there's not like a big drop off. Sometimes you see like a big drop off, like the graphics would be like really really beautiful in cutscenes. But then when the gameplay, it's kind of like. Eh. It's not so much of a drop off, it's almost on par. So like the gameplay looks pretty good and then the cutscenes look better. They look a little better, not like much better or, or the gameplay doesn't look worse or like a lot worse. It looks like pretty good. It's like, oh, this is pretty good gameplay graphics. And then when you get to the cutscenes, it's like, wow, okay. So it's like, it's, it's pretty good. It's not a big drop off like you've seen in most games. Uh, so, you know, that's all good and uh getting into glitches now now i heard somewhere that this game was kind of like in the early stages um kind of like beta stages kind of still so the demo is was expecting to have some issues here and there now when i was playing i didn't run into any game breaking issues uh, it seemed pretty good uh the gameplay was pretty smooth there's only one thing that may or may not have been a problem it kind of depends maybe the game was you know designed this way but when I was playing, uh, there's like this, you know, when you press the touchpad, there's this menu that brings up like inventory and it brings up like the journal. So it's like the inventory, you like change your weapons that you have picked up, things like that. 
uh, the journal, it, you know, it digs into like character profiles. If you meet a character, you get to dig into their profile, learn more about them, their backstory. Uh, if you pick up things around the world, you get to know about, you know, the world, different places, different organizations, things like that. So when you had that screen active, the game world is uh, still active. Like I found myself and I wasn't I wasn't aware of this until one point where I was in the middle of a shootout with some enemies and I didn't like the weapons that I had out. So I wanted to swap one out. And so I went to the inventory screen and then I pick a weapon. I'm like, okay, this one might work. And then I get out of the screen, come to find out I'm taking damage from all of these enemies moving around. So I'm like, oh man, holy, hold up. There was even times where like a couple of occasions where I would leave the menu, uh, go into the menu and then come back into the game and I'm dead. Like, like I got killed. Like I got killed on pause. Like how you get killed while you on pause? Like that's just foul, bruh. So they've had that go on. Now, maybe it's not a glitch, maybe it is. Like I said, maybe it is the game is designed this way because there have been games where, uh, because this game does have an actual pause button. Like you press options for pause. It'll bring up the pause menu, everything is paused. You have your, you know, resume game options, all this and that. And then you have the touch uh, pad that does the inventory and the journal and all this and that. So there are games that do that. Like Metal Gear Solid 5 comes to mind, like Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain you know you have a regular pause button that stops the game but then you have the touchpad that does the iDroid menu and when you're in the iDroid the world is active enemies are still moving around even venom snake can kind of move around you know with the iDroid thing but the iDroid is more so you know giving you different menus but if an enemy catches you while you're in iDroid mode they can shoot you dead they don't care about you being on the iDroid you know looking around they they will shoot to kill so this game seems to be designed like that. Um, you know, maybe, maybe not. I think it probably was intentional. That's why I don't think it's like a glitch. But um, other than that, gameplay was pretty much perfectly smooth. I didn't have a problem with that. The only problems I had were with cutscenes. Um, it wasn't too frequent. It was kind of like few and far in between. But it was like always speech-wise. Uh, you would get characters, they would repeat a certain line twice. And then you would get it to where the audio kind of cuts out for a second. So there's like a word or two that you didn't hear. And then there would be like stutters, you know, not a speech impediment from a character, but like an actual like stutter that was unintentional due to the game kind of having a hiccup or whatever. And now these happen few and far between uh, and they happen for like, you know, a second or two. You don't miss much of the dialogue. It's just really like annoying because it's kind of like, oh, I want to know what they said. but. You don't like miss any like key plot points. It's not like all oh, audio cuts out for like a whole two minutes. And it's like, well, what what just happened? I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. It's like it's it's just you know here and there. It's kind of minimal. Something that could be fixed up with a quick patch. Uh, the more the most uh, persistent thing that I've come across though was uh, syncing. Um, when you see a character talking, their moves, you know, their lips move their speech rarely ever lines up with their lips. That's the only persistent thing that I've seen happen. Uh, that is something that's kind of like, you know, it bothers a lot of people. Me, it's kind of like, mm. but um, yeah, it's something that like, that was the biggest thing that I've seen. And I'm pretty sure when the game rolls out April 1st, there's gonna be like a day one patch to fix that up. At least you would hope so. But those are really the only problems that I've seen. It's really just been glitches as far as speech and uh, dialogue, really. Other than that, the game was pretty smooth. Um, and like I said, they happened few and far in between. The only thing that was the most persistent was just the dialogue rarely synced up with the character's mouths. So with that being said, um, I did enjoy this demo. I fairly enjoyed the demo. I fairly enjoyed the game. I'm actually gonna buy this game. I'm actually gonna pre-order it day one. It comes out April 1st. So I'll be checking it out. I will be doing some videos. I've already done some videos, like I said, like on the demo, on the playthrough. Now with this um, playthrough, when you create your character, there are four different classes for your character too. Now you don't pick them right away. You have to beat the prologue first. And then um, I think it says chapter one. I don't know if you complete chapter one or if they have you play through most of chapter one. I think they have you play through most of chapter one. You have to face a boss. And then after you face him, the demo is kind of pretty much over, like uh, as, as far as the main missions go, but there are four side quests that you can participate in. Now, when I did my playthrough, I did one of those side quests. I have to go back to do three more for my um, character's first playthrough. But 
I pretty much beat the demo. I just have to go back to get those side quests completed. And then um, they have you pick your class after the prologue. So there's four different classes. I picked the Pyromancer because he plays with fire. He has all these like nice little fire tricks because it's like it's a video game, man. Who doesn't like blowing things up in video game? I'm all about blowing things up well, in video games, not in real life. But anyway, I picked that one. There's three others. So when I do the demo, I will be going back, not just to complete the first playthrough, but to also play with those other classes. And I heard too that when you create your character and everything, uh, when you beat the prologue, you don't have to go back to the prologue again. You can actually play through it and then come back to the part where you get to pick your class again and just play with other classes like that with the character that you already created. For me personally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go back and do the prologues anyway, three other times and just create three new different characters, you know, create some female characters too, create another male character and then just play with um, the three different other classes that I didn't pick the first time around. And that's how I'll just go about mine. But you can also, um, so like I said, like with that one too, if you want to like change your character's look but pick a different class, you can do that too. Um, you have it where there's a camp in Enoch. Once you get, you know, progressing to the demo farther enough, there's a camp where you can edit your character's, um, you know, uh, looks. Now you can edit, actually uh, edit everything. That's what they said. Now I have gotten to the point, I just, I've seen it in the camp. I just never actually used it because I liked my character's look. I was pretty cool. I was satisfied with it. I didn't want to change anything. So I didn't go in there to see what you can do. But the developer said that you can actually change every single thing about the character that you want. I'm sure that would include gender too. Maybe, you know, midway through the game, you can switch from male to female or female to male if you want to. I think you can do that. But they, they did say you can change everything about the character's looks. The only thing that you can't change is the class. Once you pick a class, you're set for that class through the entire campaign. But um, that's how this demo goes. And I've been playing it for about three or four hours. It's pretty lengthy. It's pretty lengthy. And like I said, I still have side quests to do too. So I still got some more time to spend with it. And then you can use all four classes, see which one you like. And the best thing about it too is that when you get the full game, the progress that you make in the demo actually carries over. So I should have, for me, I'm going to do four different files for four different classes. I should have each class already in the game when I get the full game. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go with the Pyromancer, but we'll see how the demo goes. I gotta play with other, three other classes. I'll see how that goes, but I'm pretty sure Pyromancer is gonna be my guy playing with fire. We'll do that. I already like the guy's look that I created for him and everything. So yeah, like all in all, man, I had fun with this demo. It was really good. I am so glad they did this because this game would have not have been on my radar had they not have done that. Like I would just been like, um, whatever. It looked like one of them old, multiplayer games that you got to play with homies and you know i ain't got them and i don't do long i do solo like man. i'm glad they did this now i found out hey i'm turned on to a new game now so i'm really gonna check this out in april i'm gonna have when i get the full game i'm gonna have uh, more playthroughs uh, they're gonna start from my demo progression so i'm gonna like you know um, the one that i had my playthrough on now i'm gonna try to continue that so it'll pick up where that demo playthrough left off and I'll finish the game and I'll give y'all, I might give y'all a GMV, but I'll definitely give you guys a review uh, once I complete the game. You know, we'll see how long that takes. I heard there's like 35 hours of um, play uh, as far as the campaign goes. So it's, it's a lengthy game. It's a pretty lengthy game and uh, looks fun. Looks really good. Looks entertaining. And yeah, y'all, like, let me know, like, if y'all looking forward to it. Have you played the demo yet? Do you plan on playing the demo? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are you going to cop it day one or not? Nah? Are you going to wait? Are you going to pass completely? Are you going to get it on Black Friday? Is it that type of game? Man, it's your boy Super Mario 1990. And uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe or else. Nah, I'm just playing. But anyway, it's your boy Super Mario 1990. I'm out. Peace in.